So this uh, application, REPL IT, is, uh, is almost like your editor, but in this case, online editor. And they provide you an opportunity to share this publicly. So anyone can visit the URL and go through your code. So um, I decided to change to this so that you can come back here to check uh, what you've done so far and if you want to use it as a reference to debug your own code. So I'm going to be sharing this link as well uh, at the at the end but um this link will never change anyway so i'll just share it so you can come back here because the code will be changing but the link will not change uh, this is your index it has exactly the same thing but we just have this generated by a repo for us as a placeholder i won't go into detail with this because this is really not necessary for our class. So this is the, the file. We need to link this uh, CSS because I changed the folder a little bit. So this will be styles slash main the CSS, exactly what we had before. And you see here we have the JS slash main uh, the JS, right? And if you see here, this is the folder, and this is the main JS, and this is the styles, and this is the main CSS. Here, we just had um, color, which is red. And here, a lot might not work in Ripple, so I'm just going to do something like console log. Um, hello. And this is linked here, and we can put that same hello word here as before. So if we run this, you see our hello world is here and it's in red. This is uh, one of the benefits of using REPL because you can run your code immediately and you get a response. So I don't have to switch screens as we go on the main reason why we are here, JavaScript. So a um, few, few points uh, that you need to know about JavaScript. Uh, it is the most popular programming language of the web. And uh, it's easy to learn, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are going to start with the introduction. Um, we have introduced uh, JavaScript a little already in here, which is we linking it and having uh, this alien console.log in here, um, which I'm going to explain in a bit. So, um, We've discussed how to link your JavaScript uh, into your web page. So the next thing now is to say, how do you get output uh, from your JavaScript? How do you get output from your JavaScript? Remember the last time we did uh, a lot and we got a pop-up on our screen, but how does JavaScript output uh, value? So there are two ways that you can output stuff in JavaScript. Is either you want to print to the web page, you want to write something from your JavaScript to the web page, you can do that. Or you want to output to the console. You see here there is a console. If you are using uh, in your case, you'll be using your editor and uh, loading your application in the browser. You can come to, um, to your browser and you right click and you will see 
this option called inspect. So when you click on inspect, you get this uh, nice window and you can go to the console tab. When you click on the console tab, every output you see here will be coming from your JavaScript. So if you want to send output to this console, that is when you use console.log. When you do this in your JavaScript, it outputs any content you pass to your console into the console. You can see here, hello, and this is what we have here. We can change this to my name is JavaScript. And if you run this again, you will get exactly that in your console. The same thing you can do in your browser. When you do that, you reload your browser and you will see the output here in your console tab. That is one way to output uh, JavaScript content for it to be visible. The second way is to print in your web page. And if you want to print in your web page, let's remove this hello, for example. And if we load this page, you see that this is totally blank. So let's print this, my name is JavaScript into our page. In order to do that, uh, you go to your JavaScript and you change this console to document.write. This is how you can write something into your screen. So if you reload this, you'll see it's no longer in the console, but in the browser itself. So with document.write, you can easily output content to the browser itself. This is the two ways in which uh, you can output so, uh, stuff in JavaScript. And there are a couple of other ways that you can uh, put something out from, from your JavaScript, but we are going to go into these ones because they are more, uh, they are more technical. So it will be good to dive into it first before talking about all these ones, but just to brush over it, um, you can also, uh, target elements and output stuff into them. But we are going to look into that uh, as time progresses. So let's talk about JavaScript statements. A JavaScript statement is single instruction that is executable by the browser or your computer program, whichever, um, what kind of program you're writing. So every statement is anything that JavaScript uh, can understand and execute, then it's called JavaScript statement. A statement can be as simple as declaring a variable, for example. This is a statement because JavaScript understands this. I mentioned to you earlier that JavaScript is uh, forgiving. In other words, it's a loosely typed programming language. It doesn't force you to put in your data type like other programming languages. And it automatically assigns those form, uh, data type to it. We also have several keywords that are reserved for JavaScript. So those keywords are used to identify actions to be performed. And these keywords cannot be used as a variable name or function name in your code. There are several keywords or reserved words in JavaScript. Um, Inside this little experiment we've done here, we have const and we have let. These two 
are all uh, keywords of JavaScript that you cannot name your variable. For example, I can't name my variable const, 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 for example. You can name your variable these uh, keyword names. And any, any of the keyword, if you notice, is being highlighted in different color. Here, that tells you that this is a reserved name for JavaScript. Another syntax we are going to talk about is JavaScript comments. How do you comment in JavaScript? What is even a comment? So a comment is something that you use to describe your, your code in order for you to be able to understand it in the later future. When you go back to your code, sometimes your code can be complex enough that you don't understand why you did what and why you did that. So with JavaScript, a comment, you can put in, in your own word to explain what you are doing in your code. And these comments are not executed by the JavaScript engine. So the syntax of adding a comment is by putting two forward slash. If you want to write a one line comment, so you can say this is to output uh, output to console. Then you have your console log there. And, and if you want to write more larger text with this, you can do multiple lines. It's only single line. See, when you start with the second line, the color changes, telling you that it's no longer a comment. But if you want to have a multiple line, the syntax is using forward slash followed by the star. And you close whenever you finish, you close with the opposing sign, star, then followed by forward slash. So I can write something here and another comment here. And you can continue writing until you, you get all your thoughts out in order to explain your code. And you can proceed by writing another uh, statement or expressions whichever you want. So this is the syntax of making a comment. This is the syntax of making a multi-line comment. And a comment cannot or will not be executed by the JavaScript code. For now, if I run this code, you see our comment is not visible anywhere not in the console, not in the browser, but only there for, uh, for guidance, to guide anyone that is coming to check our code in the future. The next one I need to uh, put out there also is that JavaScript is case sensitive. JavaScript is case sensitive, so, what do we mean by being case sensitive? It means that, let's uh, come down here. Let's say variable A equals to five, five. Then let's console log A. And we can say variable A, which is capital letter, equals to four. So if you print this, let's remove this one so you understand what's going on. If you print this, you see that we have five printed here. So when we say 
is case sensitive, it means that small letter A and capital letter A is seen as two different things. Is seen as two different things. Okay, so if you are naming your variable and you say something like uh, um, ball equals to something and you, you, you come here and you say ball because you want to maybe reassign the variable, for example, and you say ball equals to four, then you're going to get an error because this is two different things. You will be you will expect ball to be four now, but this is two different things. Okay. That is what is meant by case sensitive. How do we name in in JavaScript? So we have what is called camel case and snake case and Pascal case. Most of all these, uh, it depends on choice, but the most popular convention is that your variables should always start with lower case. And when it's multiple words, then you use the camel case and camel case start with lower case and followed by capital uh, starting of the word. For example, we want to say white ball. This is two words. So how do you join these two words together? So in JavaScript, you can name your variable white ball. For example, having white space between. You can't do this in JavaScript. So. The other way is to do it like this, say white ball, but reading this becomes difficult, right? Because you don't know where an uh, individual word actually breaks. So that is where um, we resort to camel case. When you do this white ball, then it is immediately obvious where the words are. So this is what is called camel case. Uh, joining two words, uh, then with these capital letters followed. And we have a snake case. Instead of using capital letter, you can use underscore. So this will also give you a clarity that this is a white ball. So this is what we call snake case, uh, using the underscore. And Pascal case is uh, starting with capital letter. And also it looks like uh, a camel case, but the difference is that instead of starting with a small letter, uh, white ball, for example, is starting with capital letter and followed by other following words are also capitalized. So this is a two format or the, the most popular format. And again, it's boils down to choice, but JavaScript will not complain of how you name your variables. But it's, it's always ideal to follow this convention. So the Pascal case is always used for class names when you want to write a class or an object that contains other uh, items or entities, you use the Pascal case. But if you want to name variables and functions, you use camel case, which we are going to go in detail uh, when we dive into the, the course uh, in depth. And I think that is, uh, what I can share with you right now on syntax, um, we are going to dive more into JavaScript syntax because there are, there are a lot that we need to learn, like the uh, if 
and the loop and while loop, all these have their own syntaxes. So when we get there, uh, then I will touch on them. 